Is your Pro Tool system not behaving like you think it should? Is it not performing? Are you getting error messages? Um, that can happen. There is a couple of documents that can be quite helpful in ironing out performance issues for Pro Tools. They are the optimization guides. There's one for Mac, one for Windows. There's one available for every version of the operating system you might have except for Catalina, which has not been released yet, but I'm sure it's coming very shortly. So uh, where do you get this? This is on the Avid website. Go to avid.com. This is the homepage here. And right in the search area, I typed in optimization. Got to spell it correctly, though. And it brings up a list of results from that search. And there it is, Computer Optimization Guides Mac and Windows. That's what we're looking for. Clicking on that. And this gives you a list of all of the operating systems. Um, so uh, on the Windows side, the most current opti uh, uh, optimization guide is Windows 10. On the Mac side, it's up to Mojave 10.14. So as of July 2020, when I'm doing this video right now, the, supported, the most recent supported version of the Mac operating system is Catalina, which is 10.15. Um, but they do not have a published um, optimization guide. But you can use this uh, optimization guide for Mojave, and it's going to get you, you know, 99, 95% of the way there. There's not much difference there in terms of these things. So, strongly recommend doing uh, if you have not done this already. If you have a, a new new computer or you're installing Pro Tools on your computer for the first time, it is well worth your time. It doesn't take a lot of time to go through this. And the majority of these items, you do not have to be a computer whiz to, um, you know, tackle these these tasks that they're asking you to do. So you don't have to be um, super computer savvy. You can be, um, they walk you through it pretty well. So Mojave, Windows Optimization Guides, I'm going to open that up here. And it basically takes you through all the steps that you need to do to uh, tune up your Pro Tools system, update graphics card driver, all these different things. Run through those. The other thing that you want to be aware of is if you're using an external hard drive for your Pro Tools systems, which is a good idea for a variety of reasons. Number one, um, recording audio can eat up the space on your internal drive. While it's okay to do that for the most part, it's recommended that you record your Pro Tools sessions to an external hard drive. You can get a, a USB, as long as it's USB 3.0, uh, hard drive for a Mac or Windows system. And uh, they're really cheap. You can get them for 90 bucks, 100 bucks, 150. It all depends on how big that you uh, want to get. I've just purchased a, um, a uh, one that looks like this. It's a little bit larger than a deck of cards. This is a uh, Seagate. And I think it was $90 for a four terabyte drive, which is a, a tremendous amount of space. You can record a lot of audio there as long as you make sure that it's a 3.0, USB 3.0. A USB 2.0 drive is not going to be good for recording or playback within Pro Tools. But um, nowadays, most all the drives you're going to buy are probably 3.0. 3.0 USB 3.0 or if you're on a Mac uh, uh, USB-C or Thunderbolt Thunderbolt 2 drives are fine Thunderbolt 3 drives are also fine all of those are going to work quite well for Pro Tools so um, this is what you want to do with a new drive that you get formatting a drive on a Mac is very easy um, I'm just at the Mac desktop. This applies to the version of the operating system that I'm currently in, Mojave, but this also applies to Catalina, High Sierra, Sierra, any of the Mac uh, OSs. This, is gonna, this process is going to be very similar. Um, go to the Go menu at the top of the screen in the upper left corner and go down to the Utilities folder, and that will open up the Utilities folder. Inside there, you're looking for the disk utility. This is a piece of software that comes uh, with the Mac operating system. And um, it will allow you to format a drive. Now, you have to be very careful with this because when you format, 
and another term for that would be to partition it or or erase it, you're wiping out all the data on the drive. So if you're going to partition, erase, or format, or initialize any one of those terms, you want to be sure that you have all of the data backed up from that drive to another location, if you care about it. If it's old stuff that you're not worried about, then don't worry about it. When you do this process to a drive, all of the information on the drive will be lost unless you've backed it up to another drive uh, somewhere else previously. So be careful. And you also want to be careful that when you do this process that you are actually formatting or erasing or partitioning the actual drive that you want to do. So in um, any example that I tend to do this, I will often remove by unmounting a drive. So if I wanted to unmount a drive, I can just select it, right click on it, and, and choose eject. And that will remove it from the desktop. And then it will also allow me to um, disconnect it if it's an external drive. Not a bad idea. Just, just be careful um, that you don't format or initialize the wrong drive. Okay, let me get this folder out of here. All right, so in this case, I'm going to look at this little thumb drive that I have connected here, and your view may look a little bit different, so I'm going to um, show only volumes. This is probably the, the view that you will most likely see when you're using Disk Utility in Mojave or Catalina. Uh, it's going to show you the drives as they appear on your desktop. They're referred to as volumes, so I've got 4 terabyte 1, 4 terabyte 2. That's what these drives are over here. There's four terabyte two, four terabyte one. That's how they appear on the desktop, right? So if I go to the upper left corner of the disk utility and show all devices, it not only shows me the, uh, for example, for four terabyte, the volume as it appears on the desktop of my Mac, but it also shows me the actual, you know, hard drive mechanism. It's a Toshiba drive, and it will give me information about that drive and how it's formatted, and that's what we want to uh, do to this new drive here. So um, I'm going to select this drive down here at the bottom. It is currently a, it looks like it's a 32 gigabyte thumb drive, and I've got it selected. I've verified that this is the drive that I want to format, and I'm being very careful here. And up at the top, uh, if it's a brand new drive, I'll just do a race. And I will do this process on any brand new drive that I add to my system. Because remember, when you purchase a new drive, um, the drive manufacturer doesn't necessarily know if you're going to install it on a Mac or a PC. So they often come in this kind of a generic format that will, will launch or mount or operate on either a Mac or a Windows machine, which is good, but that format is not optimized for a Mac or a Windows machine. So you want to do this process so that you are making sure that the format of the new drive that you're adding to your system is, is the proper format. So for Mac, it's Mo, uh, Mac OS Extended Journaled, and the scheme is GUID Partition Map. And now what, to, let me go back and get to this. So I've selected the actual drive mechanism that I want to erase, and up at the top of the disk utility, I click on Erase. And I can name it whatever I want, audio drive, Pro Tools drive, external drive, doesn't matter. Keep it kind of short, though. And the format, you have several different options here. We do not want to use MS-DOS or XFAT for uh, a Mac drive. We want to use Mac OS Extended Journaled. Do not use Encrypted. Use Mac OS Extended Journaled and the scheme if it's available in this pop-up menu is GUID partition map right that's what we want for this drive and then you click erase and the process will take maybe 30 seconds 60 seconds or top the drive uh, tops the drive will unmount from your desktop so you will see it disappear and it will go through this process and then it will mount um, again and when the drive comes back up oftentimes you will see a dialogue saying something about do you want to use this drive for time machine no we do not want to use this uh, newly erased drive for time machine that's a whole nother conversation so um, once that's done you're good to go you can go in there and create folders if you want um, you can record to it you can play back from it and uh, that's the process for a Mac
This is how you format a drive in Windows 10. Go to the Start menu, right click on it, and choose Disk Management. The Disk Management window will open up. Select the drive that you want to format, right click, choose Format, and then name it. I chose to name this one called Audio Drive. I chose to name this one Audio Drive. You can name it whatever you want. And the file system that we want is NTFS. You can use the allocation unit size set to default. That's fine. Click OK. Formatting this drive will erase all data. Yes, remember, you if there's anything on the drive, that you, uh, be sure to back it up, copy it off. And the formatting process will take uh, 60 seconds or so. Or longer. Okay, once it's done, the drive will be listed in the disk management as a healthy disk. I'll go to uh, this PC, formerly known as this computer. Thank you, Windows, for changing things and moving things around to unintuitive locations. There's my audio drive. It's drive D. And I'll check the properties. It is a NTFS drive, perfect for recording with Pro Tools.